welcome back. In this presentation, I want to go over the differences between job order costing and process costing. So in managerial accounting, uh, we're looking at a lot of manufacturing firms and one of the most common costs associated with manufacturing are product costs. So just to remind you, product costs are your, your direct materials, your direct labor, your manufacturing overhead. And all of these costs are going to be accumulated and assigned either using job order costing or process costing. Now the difference between job order costing and process costing is that job order is normally used for highly custom products. So think about maybe uh, like a furniture uh, manufacturer or let's say um, example Boeing you know, the aircraft manufacturer in the States, uh, whenever they're putting together an aircraft, they're going to have to uh, accumulate all these costs, materials, labor, and overhead, um, and they're going to have to assign them to a, uh, to, a, to a job. And each of these jobs are going to be a different aircraft. So we might have, you know, a jumbo jet for job number one. You might have a smaller commercial uh, airplane for job number two and so on. So the way in which we assign these costs are going to be, you know, using a, a material requisition form. Uh, when we're assigning labor, we'll use time tickets. Time tickets just basically give us an idea of how many hours go into a certain job and so forth. So that's job order costing. Think highly custom products. Now process costing on the other hand is used in kind of your mass production environment where the products are very similar in nature. Um, they could even be the same. You know, an example of that is the Coca-Cola company. Each of their soft drinks are going to be a standard size and an amount filled in a bottle and uh, and it, it's process costing is a much more effective way to accumulate and assign costs uh, for mass production so let's look at essentially how costs kind of flow through these different methods so let's do first up is job order costing. So in job order costing, we're going to have, you know, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and these costs are going to be assigned to different jobs. So we'll have job number one, job number two, like I said earlier, and job number three. And like I said, these are going to be different aircrafts that we're creating if we were to look at our Boeing example. And um, I just want to bring up kind of like a, a T account just below. Uh, so when, when, we're, when we're assigning these costs to a job, we're going to have, this is our, well, this is all our work in process right here. Because once we've assigned these materials, these raw materials and uh, labor and overhead, it becomes work in process. So this is our work in process account. Now when we uh, requisition materials, that's going to be our first entry. So let's say we requisition, I don't know, uh, $1 million worth of materials for a jumbo jet. That seems a little bit low, but I'm going to use that. Uh, I'm going to just pretend that these are in thousands. So 1,000 is going to represent a million. Um, labor, when we look at the time tickets involved in a jet, maybe we'll have uh, $500,000 worth of labor that goes into it. So we're going to debit that amount. And finally, overhead. Let's say, I don't know, uh, 2.8 million. Oh, that's just my cat sneezing in case any of you wondered. Uh, so once we have all these costs accumulated, 
into our work in process, once the job is finished, it's going to become finished goods. And we're going to credit this amount. So 1,000 plus 500, 1,500 uh, plus 2,800, what is that? My 33, 4,300. Okay, so we're gonna credit 4,300 and remove all of the stuff from work in process to our finished goods. And I don't really have a T account ready for that, but I'm just gonna create one really quickly. Finished goods. And the amount is going to be transferred to this account. So that's kind of your, your flow of costs in a job order costing system. We're going to start with our raw materials. It's gonna be accumulated and assigned to work in process. And then from work in process, it's going to be assigned to finished goods. So fairly simple compared to process costing. So process costing on the other hand, <clears throat> let me just remove these uh, T accounts for now. And I'm actually going to get rid of this as well. If, only if I can find which layer that I wrote it on. Okay, perfect. Uh, now process costing on the other hand, we're going to have uh, direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, just like we did uh, in the past example. But for, let's look at Coca-Cola as a scenario. So when we have these costs, they're going to be, they're going to be accumulated and assigned once again to a process. So instead of, instead of assigning them to different jobs, we're going to take all of these and move them into process number one. And process number one uh, is, you know, mixing all of the materials. So let's write down mixing, mixing the water, the delicious sugary syrup, and to create that caramelized uh, soft drink beverage. So that's our first process. We're going to take all those costs and put them into this account. So this is our first whip account. And then once we're finished with the mixing phase, we're going to transfer them over to process number two, which is once we finish mixing, we need to fill the bottles. So let's say filling and bottling. I probably should have said bottling. Um, and once we're finished with bottling, it's going to be moved to the next phase, process number three, which is labeling and inspection. And I'm gonna show you the T accounts for this as well. Um, I've got them down here. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to move that. T account number one. Okay, so when we have these costs, um, kind of like how we did it for job order, uh, we're going to put a certain amount of costs for materials, a certain amount for labor, and a certain amount for overhead. So this is our work in process uh, mixing and blending account. And then once it moves to process two, we're going to transfer the amounts, uh, 1,500 and 500, that's 2,000. So 2,000 is going to be credited from mixing and it's gonna be added to work in process, uh, filling or bottling, I'm just gonna correct my error and say bottling in that case. Uh, and we might add some costs in this stage. We might need more labor. So um, I'm gonna say the fifth transaction may be another $500,000 of labor. And then let's add a little bit of overhead as well. So now we have 2,600. And once we're finished with bottling, we're going to remove the amounts 
uh, 20, 2600, we're going to credit that and move it to the final stage, which is uh, labeling and inspection. Let me just write this down. Labeling, work in process, labeling. So we'll take that 2600, move it into here. You know, maybe labeling requires some more materials uh, to create those labels. Um, so let's say, I don't know, another 100,000 for labels. Uh, maybe there's no late or maybe there's no labor required in this process. So uh, we're going to skip that. And maybe there's overhead of, I don't know, 400. And that amount is 26 for, so that's 3,100. And the 3,100 is going to be credited and moved to finished goods. You know, that's that's always the sequence of events for inventory processes. Are uh, starting with raw materials uh, and labor, overhead, adding them to work in process. These are individual work in process accounts and then they become finished goods. So in summary, the difference between job order costing and process costing is that Job order costing is very custom, uh, used for custom products. Process costing is used for mass production. And remember, remember that job order costing, there's only going to be one whip account. We're going, even though there are different jobs, there's only one whip account. Whereas process costing, there are going to be uh, multiple whip accounts depending on how many processes we'll go through. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Uh, next one, I think we'll be talking about the production report. So I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.